play money and harvest. Today's the beginning of Advent, which is the coming of Christ. So we're supposed to be alive and alert and enthusiastic. And we're supposed to have a joy. Yes, you sure? Alive. You're tired? Of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's coming. We celebrate from today onwards, not as a babe in a manger, but as the Christ that will come for his harvest soon and very soon. I want to welcome all visitors sharing with us this morning. I know that I would ask you to stand, but I think it will be more or less 90% of the church or so. But nevertheless, I say welcome to you, those of you who are celebrating here for the very, very first time. Would you please stand? You've never been wish never worshipped her in San Fernando. Oh, we warm, we warmly welcome you to San Fernando. We thank God for you that you took the time out to come and worship with us. I pray that it would not be the last that you will worship and that you will feel free to come as often as you can. And if you don't have a home church, welcome to San Fernando. We will warmly embrace you and you'll be part of us. So this morning I want to welcome all visitors again. Thank you for sharing with us and I pray that the Spirit of God will just fall upon you and that you would not leave the same way that you came in, but that you will be truly blessed. To you, the members, it's always a joy and a privilege to have you here. I thank God for you and I pray and trust that you will have a blessed week in Christ. I want to acknowledge the presence of our pastor, the pastor for this church and for the, the superintendent minister of the South Trinidad Circuit, it's the Reverend Dwayne Sam. I thank God for you, sir, and I pray that God will bless you. And I also want to welcome Mrs. Sam, who's trying to hide in the corner. So we welcome you, Mrs. Sam, as well. To our liturgist, who is no stranger to us, Sister Sherry and Tiffany. I want to also welcome all the children, the children of Wesley Preschool, the children of the San Fernando Methodist School, who will be hearing later on, as well as the children of our own Sunday School. So I want to welcome one of all. I want to welcome Reverend Sheldon Dewsbury, who is trying to also, and Mrs. Dewsbury, we want to welcome you. All ministers and ministers who I may not see within the midst, we welcome one and all. Thanks and appreciation to those who clean the sanctuary, to the audiovisual team, the musicians, especially Mark, we want to welcome you and thank God for you. And we pray that God will continue to bless you all. Birthdays and anniversaries. Do we have anybody celebrating a birthday today or during the course of the week? Jump up quickly. Any birthdays? All right. I go to the back. Who else? Any birthdays? Okay. Any anniversaries? Mine is a new week. We'll sing the birthday song now. Also have sharing in that evening with us the magnificent M. 
So please come out one and all this evening right here in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. Service of the Word continues this Tuesday at 6. And on Wednesday morning, devotions continue at 10 a.m. Followed by the midday service at 12 noon. Wesley Preschool Concert takes place on December 3rd, 2016 from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. right in the schoolroom downstairs. The cost, adults $100, children $50. Tickets are available from the members and the teachers at Wesley Preschool. The National Women's League Annual Luncheon takes place on Saturday, December 10th from 12 noon to 2 p.m. And this takes place at the Tranquility Methodist Church. Hall cost $150. And tickets are available from Sister Meade Murray. So the National Women's League Annual Lunch on Saturday, 10th December, from 12 noon to 2. Tranquility and cost $150. But you know this is the season for all the concerts and all the luncheons and everything. Voices of Patrick Flynn presents He is the Reason, and this will take place on Saturday, the 10th of December, 2016, at 7 p.m. at the Naparima Bowl. The contribution is $125, and tickets are available from Brother Edison Marshall. Also, the San Fernando Methodist School, the, the annual Taste of Christmas, this takes place on the 9th of December, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and the cost is $75. Delight your taste buds with the taste of Christmas. So please, as many of the ventures that you can support, please do so. I want you also to remember in your prayers. Our country of Trinidad and Tobago as we go to the polls tomorrow, that we will have a very safe election and that the will of God will be done. Okay, so these are all the notices that I have for today and for the week. So God bless you and enjoy your harvest festival. Thank you.
And when he right, looked inside, he said, what is this? He said, what is this boy? I am so frightened, I am scared. So he ran, my dad, he ran to the chicken. And the chicken was going, clock, clock, all that was going Clock, 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 clock. And he said, Miss Chicken! And she was like, you know what? I said, do you know that there's a rat trap in the house? And she said, can you tell me that for <laughs> That has nothing to do with it. Yeah, she said that, I know that. What does that rat trap have to do with me? She said, listen boy, I have my little chickies or whatever. Let's call them chicks, right? I have my chicks to take care of. Don't worry about that. You understand that rat trap has nothing to do with me. And she went away. The rat was still worrying. So he went next to Mr. Pig. How does a pig go? And Mr. Pig was there rolling in the mud. You know the pig's rolling in mud? Right. He was rolling in mud. And the rat people said, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, there's a rat trap in the house. And what do you think Mr. Pig said? Right. Mr. Pig turned around the next side of the the mud and said, oink. He said, that has nothing to do with me. So, the next thing, Mr. Rat was still worrying, and he said, listen, I have to tell somebody else. And he went to Miss Cow. How does that cow go? And what did he say to Miss Cow? There is a the house. And what do you think Miss Cow said? And he had the family, the great power of the family for years. 
Arrivat stor. Arrivat shoke sen. Shake my hand. Thank you, sir. Shall I watch what think? Beside being morbid, what is the story? What is the message of the story? Always be considerate. Let me hear you. Help others when needed. Anybody else just give them a clap?
that is Boogie Boogie's who have been practicing all the presentation. <coughs> and those daffodils who should be at my left and right. We are calling those the individuals to come forward. Just to watch what I'm going 
morsomt for dig. Så skal vi alle bare blive resten af kvalen. Så når vi skal på kvalen, vi åbner sådan der så kommer så også om der er sidst et, vi er nu sidst på det i 22. Og vi er nu i resten for vi nu vi er nu i kvalen for det. This is a Christ. Good morning.
the light of the text of science, remain standing for the gospel. This comes to us from the gospel according to John, chapter 6. We read from verse 24 through to verse 35. Glory to you, O God. John chapter 6, reading from verse 24 through to verse 35, the bread of life. John chapter 6. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, 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 you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then? so that we may see it and believe it. What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of heaven for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. My brothers and my sisters, this is the gospel of Christ.
So children, you have a very special place in the life of the church and in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Interestingly enough, a little child will feature very prominently in the message that God will have laid on my heart for this morning. For the title of the message is simply Lessons from a Child. And later on, we will see just how special this child was. We have been worshipping under the theme, Embracing the Fruit of the Spirit. And the theme reminds us that while all, while cultivating crops is very important for our physical well-being, cultivating the fruit of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, is just as important, or some persons will argue, even more important for our spiritual well-being. Paul in Galatians and I, the children, quoted it, Paul in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, lists some important characteristics which a Christian should cultivate and develop when he says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And sometimes during the message we will get to identify some of the characteristics of a little boy I will make mention of. So I want you to pay attention. The title of the message which God has laid on my heart is what again? Oh, you have a I thought you were really listening. You can't catch me. You can't me. And the text comes from John chapter 6, verses 8 and 9. Reads, one of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five body loaves and two fish. He asked, But what are they among so many? So, friends, one day, Jesus had been preaching to a large crowd. He was satisfying their spiritual needs because more than likely, Jesus was teaching them about their need to repent of their sins and be part of the kingdom of God. The crowd spent the whole day with Jesus. However, as evening approached, Jesus was aware of their need for physical food. After all, these persons had spent the whole day with him and they did not even stop for a lunch break because as far as the crowd was concerned, they were being filled. You see, my dear friends, when you are having that relationship with Jesus, when you are having, when you are in the presence of the Lord, Somehow, my dear friends, a lunchtime could pass and sometimes even dinner could pass. And you don't feel hungry because you have been spiritually filled. The disciples, however, my dear friends, would have suggested that Jesus dismiss the crowd so that they could go and get something to eat. After all, these persons would have been with him from in the morning or right up into the evening and they had had something to eat. No doubt, the disciples were thinking, listen, we are in this kind of deserted place. Our means can never be sufficient. It is an impossible task. Where would we get enough food, enough money to buy the food? And I guess, my dear friends, Philip had a point there, you see? You see, he had asked the question, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? The writer could have said in hindsight that Jesus said that to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Now, Philip could have said that, or John could, writing this, this gospel could have said that, he said, you know, Jesus was just testing him because you're just trying to see, you know, if Philip had enough faith. But he could say that, but that is in hindsight. He and all didn't know what was going to happen. Philip and even answered him, Lord, you know something? We are sprouting. Six 
month's wages could not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Now it is not recorded in this version of the story, but in another version, Jesus insisted that the disciples find food and give the crowd to eat. He asked them, what food was available? In the crowd was a little boy with a lunch of five loaves and two fish. Actually, it was Andrew, one of the disciples, Simon Peter's brother, who reported to Jesus about the food that the little boy had. And Andrew went to ask, and I will see with him there, but what is five barley loaves and two fish among so many people? But Jesus did something very interesting. Now Jesus would not have just taken the boy's lunch away. No? Jesus would have asked him, son, would you give your lunch to me? Could you imagine this little boy with five loaves and two fish in front of Jesus and a hungry crowd around him? I'm sure, my dear friends, this boy's mother would have been very thoughtful. She would have packed the little lunch for her son because she knew more than likely that you know how little boys like to like to eat. I remember your know, friends. When I was growing up, when I reached all 13 and 4, I used to get licks because I didn't like to eat. But when I started to eat so, <laughs> my aunt who raised me said, this is the same boy I used to eat to eat because it was you know, you know, anybody, the older person has known this, uh, this great, uh, this big contractor, Mutilal Munan? Yes. Well, my aunt used to call me Mutilal Munan because I used to remove mountains. <laughs> but I remember, you know, boy, when lunchtime came, he said, well, breakfast was about four hours. And for dinner, it was about six hours. When it was because I was a growing, I was a growing man, I can't do that again. Because of the seventy show. <laughs> so I can imagine my dear friends. And you see when lunchtime came, that was only the best time to go to school. Because when they finish me, it's time to what? To play. But I had to have a lunch. So imagine this little boy with his lunch, five loaves, and I'm sure he knows my idea about this, five loaves and two fish. And Jesus asking him, to give up his lunch. But guess what? Jesus received what the boy had. The boy didn't say, well, Jesus, I can help you. I can give you three. I'll keep two for myself. I'll give you three loaves and one fish and see what they can do with that. What, what, what he did, my dear friends, he gave his whole lunch to Jesus. So Jesus received the lunch of a boy whose name is not even known. He blessed it. He broke it. And gave it to his disciples to distribute. And guess what? The people ate and were what? They were full and satisfied. What are some of the characteristics or fruit of the spirit which the boy displayed? I am sure we will name at least one. What do you think that the boy displayed? What characteristic? of the spirit did this little boy display? <laughs> no way, no way. Don't call it away. He was what somebody said something. This was G. Generous. He was he practiced generosity. What else? Kind. He was he was kind. Anything else? He was yes, he displayed love. He displayed kindness. Okay. Now, the thing about it, so satisfied with the people who were fed from these five loaves and two fish that when Jesus instructed the disciples to gather the fragments, they were able to collect how many? They were able to collect 12 baskets. Friends, we live in a world in need of spiritual food. Food that will satisfy the inner hunger of people's lives. The Lord says, give them something to eat. Someone commenting on Jesus' request pointed out 
Jesus did not say, listen to this. Jesus did not say form of committee or commission. He said, give them something to eat. You know why their friends may like to form committees. And the committee will say one thing. And then when they meet again, they will say something else. And then in the end, what happens? <laughs> Nothing gets done. Jesus is depending on each and every one of us to give the world something to eat. Jesus' means of feeling a spiritually humble world, hungry world is through his own people. His command is for us today. Sometimes, my dear friends, Sometimes we give God excuses why we cannot be involved in ministering to the spiritual needs of people. We feel we have nothing that God can use. We say sometimes also that we are too busy or we have too many home or business responsibilities. But I'm saying, my dear friends, wherever you find yourself, Jesus is able to use what we have so that the world can be ministered to. We may feel we have nothing or little to offer him, but guess what? Little is much when God is in it. It is not what we have, but what we are doing with what we have. Do not, my dear friends, be like the man with the talent, with the one talent. When, G, when the master came and asked for the account, the one who had five talents said, listen, master, you gave me five this is, I have, I went and I did business and I got another five. And so I bring back ten. He said, well done. Um, you have been responsible for little, I'll give make you responsible for much. The one with the three talents came and said, you know, master, you gave me three. Here is six. Because I went and traded and I got three more. But, and he too got a blessing. But the one who had one talent, you know what he said? He said, boy. That man is a hard man. So I don't want to take any chances. I will take my talent. What did, what did, he, do? What did he do today? What did he begged it. Guess what? When he was called to give an account, he gave what God gave him. He said, Master, you know, you're a hard man. You know, I know that you be where it is not so. So the, man, so, so the master said, Oh, you are lazy, good for nothing, and worthless. So you know that I'm a hard man. Why did you go and take what I gave you? Go and trade it. Go and make an investment so that when I when I return, I would get something of what I would have given you. He said, listen, you see what this man have? Take what he have and send him away from my presence. For he that has, more will be given up him, and he that does not have. Even that which that he has will be taken from him and given to someone with much. But friends, I remember a story of a woman. She heard a preacher, because they're not all talents here, they it. She heard a preacher preach about the talent. And she came and she said, you know, preacher, gave them after this to the preacher, I think I know what my talent is. I have the gift of criticizing. <laughs> so the preacher said, you know, lady, you remember the story with the what I preach about? The talent? Do what a man with the one talent did. <laughs> so friends, careful. But whatever we have, my dear friends, when we place it in God's hands, when we place our lives in God's hands, He's able to use us in a mighty Interesting, interestingly enough, later on in this same chapter, that is John chapter 6, it is recorded that Jesus went to the other side of the lake. And the members of that, that same crowd who had, who had been fed, they went looking for him. And when they eventually found him, he indicated to them that they were looking for him because they had been filled with loaves. In other words, my dear friends, they wanted their stomachs to be filled again. Jesus advised them that they must not work for that which does not last, 
but will for that which lasts. He indicated to them the following. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, but whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We live in a world that is hungry and thirsty, and we have the answer. Let us tell others about the satisfaction we have in finding Jesus Christ. Let us not keep it a secret any longer. We have been quiet for too long. The world is hungry and waiting, waiting to hear the good news. A minister I know had a series of services in Nelson Street, Port of Spain. Many persons were ministered to, and many persons testified about the blessings they had received. Now, this minister, my dear friends, has an assembly in Point 14. But a member and she found herself in Nelson Street, ministering. But a member of a in the area went to one of the evening services hosted by the minister and her congregation. Missing for that evening, the gang leader asked him when he returned about his whereabouts. He admitted that he had attended a service where a woman was giving away Jesus. The leader, the leader, that the gang leader that is, he asked the member, so what happened? Is only you alone want Jesus or what? The leader went to the minister and after attending one of the services, asked her if she, did, she could extend the series of meetings for at least one more week, which she did. Now they have a regular fellowship in Nelson Street and East Ryuva for the state. Who knows, my friends? Perhaps there is an area in and around San Fernando where persons are waiting to be ministered to with the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have that word. Let us not keep it to ourselves. For after all, some persons are waiting to receive Jesus. And God has appointed us to feed them. Let us resolve to start, to start going or sowing the precious seed of the gospel of salvation in the hearts of everyone. Who knows? God through His Son Jesus Christ by the enabling power of the Holy Spirit is depending on us to feed Him. So according to words of Matthias Campbell, which was subsequently translated by Jane M. Campbell, we plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow and winter, the warm to swell the grain, the breezes and the sunshine, and soft, refreshing rain. All the gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, then thank the Lord for all his love. The world is waiting. Let us go to plant the precious seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That the good seed on the land.
around us are sent from heaven above. Oh, thanks, O oh Lord. Oh, thanks, O oh Lord. Father God, we thank you for your many blessings towards us. We thank you, O oh God, for harvest and seed time. Seed time and harvest. We thank you, O oh God, that we can return a portion of what you have blessed us with, O oh God. And for that, we say thanks. Bless each head bowed here today, O oh God. Father, those who gave and those who didn't have to give. But let them know, O oh God, that the greatest gift they can give, O oh God, is themselves. So use us, O oh God, in your kingdom. And bless all that is around us right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Amen. Please be Continue. The world may stand as a sign of hope for all and an example of love to the world. May it be faithfully Christ-like, responding to its mission, not counting the cost of commitment, but paying the price of faith and rejoicing in the joy of our common calling to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So is it in his name. All, we pray the ultimate sentences. I begin. Holy Spirit, our lips speak a word of love for those who are sad of affection. Holy Spirit, put in our hands the gift of peace for those who live in places of violence and fear. Holy Spirit, through our thoughtfulness, offer the church of patience to those who live in the ordinary trials and difficulties. Holy Spirit, in our deeds show the worth of goodness to encourage all who believe evil is in control. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, in our constancy, display the enduring quality of faithfulness so that we may stand by those who have lost their trust. Holy Spirit, enable our hearts and our judgments, like in the hearts of those wounded and deceived. Together, Holy Spirit, fill each demanding day with your gift of self control so that we may understand. As we respond to human we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And before we sing the Lord's Prayer, we will ask to come so that we can pray with her on the occasion of her birthday.
television in the morning. Yeah. Come, come and stand in the cafe. And there is somebody else. Go on, your mama. Yes, sir. Come.
see if you all have a little bit of, you all have a little reverend patience, which is, you know, part of the fruit of the spirit. Just need a little bit of that, and everything will be to the honor and glory of God. Amen? Amen. So just bear with us. Thanks. Now thank we all of God, hands and hands and voices, what your things have done, in whom this world rejoices. It is, it is number nine of all. In these few hours in your sanctuary, we thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done with us, in us, and through us during the two hours of worship. So, Lord God, we pray that even as we get ready to go outside of this sanctuary, we pray, oh Lord God, that we will not batter and will not be disorderly or rude. But Lord God, we will perform our business, oh Lord God, with dignity, justice, and love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us bless each other. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. See you outside and then after seeing you outside. See you this evening at 6. God bless you.